Okay, so let's start with Wilderness War. Um, to begin with, I start looking at the board and I'm saying, oh my god, what do I do? It's a hard game to grasp right away. And this is true with a lot of the CDGs, to tell you the truth. What am I supposed to do? Now, I know I have this general strategy that I took that I didn't use with the French, and I feel the French have kind of the initiative, so they should be leading things here, and I have to make their decision first of, let's get that rich areas in the Southlands. Okay, fair enough. But given that, how am I going to go about it? Well, oh, by the way, the militia here, that's actually listed in the 1757 scenario, so my assumption is there's no militia on the board for the, the grand the campaign game. Anyway, the French have this Cherokee Uprising card. It's a one-time card. Um, they don't have any Cherokee on the board, the uh, English, which means it's not the best time for them to play this. It has some interesting effects, though. It would eliminate two regulars at a southern provincial. The only southern provincial is down here. It's very tempting. I'm just giving, you know, sort of a, an initial thoughts here. What other things are tempting? Well, the fort at Oswego, uh, the stockades coming down along, uh, along the river. That's very tempting. Um, I kind of see that as easier because we've got this mountain barrier here to the south. Of course, if I let the English, they can start building stockades in the south, build up militia maybe somehow. I don't know how that's going to happen. <sighs> Anything else that could be taken? A drive could be made down um, here and cut over to the Hudson, but that's taking right into the British strength. I don't know. Anyway, those are my initial thoughts with the French. I'm going to try to figure out what I'm going to do. Okay, it was a hard choice, but I made my choice. I'm going to play a one-point activation to activate Dumas. I've thrown, uh, who is this, Bureau and the troops that add up to their size, their, their command rating, into that space. They're going to move together. I don't want to move to this space because that forces me to fight these guys. I think that's actually probably to my disadvantage. I can move immediately here. That's not too bad. But I do have four movement points. So I'm going to go one, two, three up to here. I think that gives me a little bit more flexibility. And I'm preparing for that southern expedition. I didn't have enough high point cards. Uh, to have any reasonable hope of a, a siege, I think. It's hard to tell, but I'll save those cards to see what the opportunity provides. And all my other leaders are twos and threes. They can't do much, especially these guys up here are pretty much useless. I could just send a one-pointer to head down one, two, three into here and put himself in a position. And I might do that at some point. But right now, that doesn't look terribly impressive. I think I can get a lot more carnage uh, by spreading out around here. Let's see what the English are going to do. The English feel like they're in a reactive position. They have to do things to counter French moves. And in this case, the best counter they can think of is to call out some militia. They have a card that will allow them to put one into the southern militia box, which is where they want it. I don't know where the north-south line is. I think it's between these two. But the northern militia would be much, much less useful. So, we'll look for one. There we go. We can take a colonial militia. And it doesn't seem like it matters which ones you use. I'll put it there. As far as I can tell, I can pull that out for every raid until it gets killed. Um, it's probably going to get killed, but at least it gets to put some kind of... Um, reduction on the forces that are attacking. And the French, true to their form, ooh, 
What did I grab? I grabbed Villars, who is not who I meant to grab. He's up here. I meant to grab this guy and leave him in the box. And I've spread those militia out, but I can't. One, two, three, four. I can keep moving five here. That's going to leave one of my regulars in a silly place. Now, the, reg the militia had the ability to spread out that way because they moved with militia uh, with regulars into here or a marine detachment but that kind of leaves this guy stuck here which is a little weird and a little painful I'll pull him back and see what I can do with him okay yeah, it may be a mistake now we're gonna start resolving a raid because there's nothing the British could do about this so let's look at how this happens the first thing I have is militia deployment. If a raid is against a stockade or an enemy cultivated this place, the enemy player may place a militia into the space. Uh, if a militia unit deploys, the uh, the raiding player must uh, must immediately attack it in a stockade if need be, I guess. And. After the battle, surviving militia returns to its box. It looks to me like I can keep bringing that in. That's that's what I was asking there. So I'm going to first attack the lone guy. I have the best odds there, I guess. And we have a battle. All right. We each have one strength point. Any modifiers? This doesn't, I believe, count as a regular. Um, so it looks like it's just straight up. We both have ones. I'll use a red die for the British and a white die because the French flag is white. We both get twos. That's no effect. The militia go back. And I'm going to put a raid marker there to remind me that that's a successful raid. Now... Now I'll drop the militia down here because this is harder to get to. Now here we have a commanding leader with tactics so the French are going to get a plus one to their die roll. This could be bad uh, facing my militia. I may not want to be doing this but we'll see. Oh, we each get a hit. Great. And the French got a star which means there's a chance of an enemy casualty on a one. Oh no, there's no British leader. Great. Okay, so both of these have been killed. And go back in the box. There's not going to be a raid there. And there's no way for me to stop elsewhere. Oh, I don't get to place this yet. I have to roll for the raids, actually. Alright, well, let's do that. We're on the raid table here. Let's take a look. Well, this one, we have a leader alone. Hmm. Gonna have to look up and see what happens to him. I think he gets displaced somewhere, but we're not quite sure where. I have to look that up. Uh, but let me take care of the raids while I'm at it. And we've got an engine here. He's got no bonus. There's no militia bonus there. Now, this is unlikely to hurt him. But on a five, it does. He gets a successful raid marker, so there's going to be a half victory point for this one. But the Indian dies. Now, I don't know... with these dead Indians, whether that's going to remove uh, an alliance marker. Because there's no Indian on the map, so I probably should keep that Indian out. If I can remember who he was, to look it up. I think he was this. And now we'll look here, and we have, I believe, a plus one for the leader. And we do it again. Oh, wait, is it a plus? Yeah. So we get a three, that's no effect. Okay. So the raid didn't succeed there. Now, what happens due to that raid? or those raids.
Regardless of the outcome, the Raiders go home. Indians must redeploy if they're not in a fortification during the Indians and leaders go home phase at the end of the year. Indians, pick them up and put them in their home settlement space. Well, that's a long way away. That's back here. I gotta walk all the way back. Hmm, that's kind of painful. All right, and likewise, with this one, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I gotta look him up and see what happens. And likewise, I have to look to see what happens to this Indian, whether he removes something. Now, he is, somewhere. He doesn't appear to be one of those. And I'm not seeing him on the board. Huh. Well, I'm going to have to look to see where he came from because the names are spelled around here and it's just not clear to me. All right, so I'll do that as well. All right, so a couple of things become clear. One is this leader who was left alone has to go back to the nearest fortification, which is here. Not a terribly useful place for him, but there you have it. Uh, the other one had the option to go here and he will. The Indians that disappeared were now I lost it again. From way back here. That counter comes off. That indicated a couple of things. Not just where an Indi that Indian would go back. But also that that's vulnerable to raids. That's no longer vulnerable to raids. And I don't know because, you know, like the Mohawk have more than one counter. So you got to be kind of careful that it's the last Indian from that area that you're pulling off or something in, in cases where that can happen. Anyway, it'll be the English turn again. Well, none too surprisingly, I screwed up there. Um, I noticed there's a step loss side on the other side of these guys. So they actually return, and now the French could move their leader up there. I don't think that's a great idea. I don't think that's a terribly useful place. Um, likewise, the militia goes back. I'm not going to bring it into play to fight, but I am a little wondering about this white square in here. So let's look up what that means. Whether that's covered. Is it a one strength point unit? Or does that mean anything? It says reduced strength. Uh, I think that's just to help indicate that's the back side of the counter. Um, but that it still has a one uh, strength. Now, that means my militia could have attacked once more. I didn't do it, so I'm not going to go back and try to fix that. Uh, I only caught this because I saw on the call out militias. Oh, I can restore two to full strength. Hey, wait a minute. Anyway. Part of the learning process, right? I am uh, a little curious, though, about the British Provincial Assemblies. So, unlimited provincials. Well, are there cards that bring them into play? I don't know. Um, unfortunately, the rule that covers the Provincial Assemblies themselves over here, British Colonial Politics, it, increase, it restricts the number of units which can be brought into play by department, but it doesn't look like it brings any into play. It looks like you can force them to do it. I mean, you obviously can force them to uh, do that, uh, to be within their restrictions if the French play it. But I have a British colonial politics, and it doesn't look like it brings anything into play. British player removes provincials as required if the French play this. Anyway, I'm going to put some thought in and try to play uh, British turn, I guess. For the British, I play a British regulars card. This is a one-use only event. It could be a three-point card, but because we're using separate deck, or the same deck, it doesn't really matter. There's not uh, a hand management component to this game. Uh, 
even though, so Twilight Struggle uses a single deck and there kind of is, but in this, these are just points for either player with no penalty or an event. By taking the event out of play, it just means I'm not going to get that event later. And I dropped uh, three regulars down here. I'm considering splitting them up two and one. I'm only allowed two of these shaded guys. These are sort of my supreme English commander types. I'm allowed two of them on the board at once. He's going to be hard to move, but I want to get him up here and then maybe take another force upward from Albany to start uh, interacting with the French directly and maybe cause them some grief. Uh, I wanted some regulars because all I've got here are provincials and I just want some more strength on the board. It seems like a good idea. Anyway, this is going to be removed from the game and I'm only allowed to play one of these per turn. Uh, sort of like in Washington's War, you're only allowed one reinforcement card per turn. And I'll load this one up. Uh, do it in multiple parts. For the leader, I had to randomly select. I have three initial leaders. Him, Webb, and Luden, I don't know if that's the same Luden or Lauten, who's uh, over on the Austrian map when you're playing uh, Clash of Monarchs, quite possibly. Anyway, uh, this is the guy I got at random. They're all about equally bad, uh, high cost, but decent amount of troops that they can lead. All right, up this goes, and we'll split uh, the first turn into a couple of play into a couple of bids.